Yeah, maybe you could elaborate a little bit more on that as a as a uh, first timer in gold and silver, of course, physical silver and physical gold, but also in the mining stocks and starting to have these movements. And I see them and I'm like, holy cow, when these things really move and it really does feel like I got in, like I was just kind of got lucky to get in at a time where things were so undervalued in the physical price, but also the mining stocks. And it seems like there's so much great potential. Maybe you could elaborate on, because a lot of people feel like maybe this might be one of those generational times. Um, do you think so? Yeah, I do. You know, it's, um, you look, this is very similar to what happened in 2000, 2001. Um, you know, I remember, um, uh, you know, Y2K, um, I'm not sure if you remember that, but, um, you know, that was, you know, the hype of the day. And, uh, you know, the clock was going to tick over on January 1st, 2020, and uh, the entire world was going to come to a crashing halt. And uh, there was all these business plans coming out and all this money being made on this dot-com boom and, boom. and then, lo and behold, by March 2000, the Nasdaq peaked at 5,000. And over the next three years, it collapsed to about 80%. And that was the, the beginning of the gold bull market that started in 2002 that went for 10 years. And... Uh, you know, we saw a 10 times move, uh, or, or, well, probably an eight times move on gold, you know, from let's say two, call it 250 to 1900. Uh, we got a 10 times move on silver, five, let's say five to 50. And if you look at those same kinds of moves, uh, uh, that's what I'm seeing starting now. So go back to, you know, um, 2016 using 1350 as your bottom on silver using 1050 as your bottom on gold, using the eight times on gold, that gives you $8,000 gold, using the 10 times on silver, that gives you $135 an ounce on silver. And I think it's gonna be 10 years. I think this is gonna, is the, we're three years in, you know, three or four years in to a 10 year bull market. Yeah, if that, if that happens, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a steak. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, I'll, I'll pay for the beer. <laughs> All right, deal. So you think we're about in like maybe the third inning then is what you're saying? Yes, exactly. So um, I know you got to get going here. Final two questions. One, sure. someone like Jim Rickards, obviously you're someone who probably has seen all of his presentation, knows him personally and all that. So yeah. he's much higher on gold than he is silver. He's like, sure, get a monster box, but he's not like really a believer in silver at all. And right. when you, what is your, what is your pitch or your angle to someone that, that schluffs it off and is it, this wacko should be, have a, have a pure gold mining company. And um, obviously you have your, your first gold mining, but they should be first majestic gold, not first majestic silver in conclusion here. And I know you've kind of done that, but give me a final pitch on why silver, why you really believe in it and why people are underestimating it. Sure. The, 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 you know, gold, let's talk about gold just for a sec. So, so in my opinion, what has put the bid into gold is the, is the central bank buying over the last, uh, you know, two, three years. Uh, the central bankers have, you know, come into this market and they're accumulating gold like they've never done, you know, since the 70s. And, uh, and, and that's taken up a lot of the excess supply and has driven prices higher. Um, now, is the reason that there's going to be a reset? Um, is, that, is that reason going to be because we have a new uh, global currency coming? Um, does that mean the U.S. dollar is going to lose its, um, uh, 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 its stature in, in, the, in the world? Uh, you know, we don't know. Uh, but that's a very, very long game. And, and uh, you know, for the U.S. to lose their reserve currency status, it's going to take a lot of time. I think it will happen. But is that a five-year game or a 25-year game? You know, I don't know. Um, so, so my point is when that happens, you need to have gold in your portfolio. Uh, and that's going to drive ultimately gold to prices that Rickard talks about, you know, this 10,000 ounce number that he, he bandies around. Um, and I completely buy into that. But for me, silver is a much more short-term trade because we are – you know, we're getting off oil and gas, we're going electric, we're re-electrifying this planet, 
in new ways. We need technology. You're not going to give up your iPhone and your iPad or your computer tomorrow. You know, our, our kids, India, China, the most of the planet is going electronic. You know, they want all the gadgets we want. So the, 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 the consumption of silver and copper um, are critical to where we're going as a human race. And the ball's not going backwards. It's going forwards. It's not going to stop. And, it, and it's going at accelerating speeds and, and gobbling up metals at, 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 at rates that currently the market does not fully understand. It doesn't need gold to achieve those things. Gold does not show up in those those technologies to any great degree. So gold is one side of the equation, very much financial, very much a granddaddy of all currencies, but silver is strategic and is required to do what we need to do. And that's why I think the, short, the shorter term game is silver and that's why I'm so invested in silver.